Dragons, elves, humans, and vampires that don't sparkle are just some of the beings that populate the realm of the five kingdoms and the nations that surround them. Hi, I'm author and vlogger Garrett K. Jones, and this is the first Forming Fantasy segment of Season 2. Happy Saturday. Today is a busy day because not only is today forming fantasy, it's also Halloween Comic Fest. I'll give more info on that in just a bit, but I want to focus the initial part of today's video on the creative influences that went into the creation of various races that I have in my fantasy series, The Archives of Isink Rand. Last season, I spent most of the segments featuring major characters as well as each of the five kingdoms. This season is less about individual characters and more about their people and their cultures. Before I get into the details of today's vlog though, I want to remind you that if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications when new videos are released. You can select alerts for all videos or you can personalize your selections. So that's up to you. All right, let's do this thing. Among the humans in my series, which are the predominant sentient race, there are several others as well. Some are more familiar than others. I have the common types of races, elves, dwarves, and dragons, and these races have had interesting histories. By the time of the opening of the Heirs of Menonias, my first book, many of the elves have intermarried with humans, creating a new race called halflings. In most fantasy series, this is what is known as a half-elf. Menonias, for example, was the actual first halfling ever born. And there are still several elves in the series, but they have chosen to isolate themselves on the fringes of the territories held by the Five Kingdoms. Dwarves have pretty much disappeared entirely. Uh, they are trying to migrate out of Isink Ran through a subterranean tunnel. They're never seen again and are presumed dead for all time. Because of the events prior to the start of the series, Dragons are almost extinct. Some still survive hidden in places where they can't be easily located or reached, but they have moved away from the kingdoms to protect what remains of their dwindling numbers. I also have some races that are relatively my own creation, although I'm sure they have counterparts in fantasy somewhere else. I have a race called Barvoltir that are like humanoid animals. There are actually three different groups, tribes if you will. Uh, in my series, and I'm exploring each one as the books progress. The first tribe is bear-like, and they start off looking human, but then they transform into their earth sign or bear form at a point of physical maturity. They have no way of changing back either. The second is a felinoid people called the Mitzrani, who look like bipedal cats all the time. Uh, then I have a lupine or a wolf-like group called the Kilha Nashba, who have the ability after training and a ritual ceremony to transform at will into large dire wolves. Dragons also have a dark counterpoint called Vipers, which are seen early in the first book. The first Viper was a dragon named Ith, who was corrupted by dark magic when Menonias attempted to bend Ith to his will. As a result, Ith lost the use of his wings, his fire became a toxic venom, and he transforms into a worm-like creature that slithers around on its belly as it drags itself around with two forelimbs and no hind legs. Vipers, like vampires, can turn other dragons into vipers, or at least Ith has that power, and they are incredibly aggressive beasts. Speaking of vampires, yes, I have them in my series, and no, they most certainly do not sparkle. There are two types of vampires seen in my series. You have the more traditional Carpathian style of vampire. Gothic, pale, no pulse, human in appearance, and partway through my third book, Rise of the Shadowkin, we are introduced to a new uh, variation that looks like and acts like vipers and are more monstrous. These creatures are called dark breed, 
and they hunt everything with the power to turn people and other vampires into one of their own number. They also continue to mutate over extended periods of time, like months or years. Uh, there's a strong, strong interconnection between dragons, elves, and vampires explored in the series. The last group is called the Kadasur. This is a celestial race akin to angels in appearance. Collectively, they are God and are the creators of all life on Earth. In fact, it is a trio of high-ranking Kadasur responsible for the creation of the sentient races. Dragons, elves, dwarves, barveltier, humans, and yes, even vampires. The Kadasur can be broken up into two classifications. The angelic entities I mentioned earlier and the demonic entities. It is their power that bleeds over to the mortal world and infuses beings with the ability to command magic and the energies, good and dark magics, are influenced by those restorative and corruptive sides. Just like with halflings, it is possible for Kadasur to reproduce with humans, but only one such occurrence has ever happened, which resulted in the birth of Asher, a major hero from my series. If you're interested in getting more info about the characters and the different races in my series, head on over to the archives of the five kingdoms.com slash archives to find all of that arcana. Halloween Comic Fest. If you're in the local Hanford or Visalia area, I'll be promoting my books at DJ's Collectibles from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The store is located at 214 North Irwin Street in Hanford, California. For this event, I will be selling each of the books for $10 instead of the usual $15 and sets of books 1 through 4 for a total of $35. Costumes are welcome because after all, it's Halloween. So hope to see you all there for this family-friendly event. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw and would like to see more, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Through a generous monthly donation of one, three, or five dollars, you can help support the content that I generate and each of those support tiers comes with 24 hours early access to the vlogs before they go live on YouTube. Plus, they have their own set of sweet perks. And if that's not your speed and you just want to make a one-time donation, take a listen to this soundbite from fellow fantasy author, Paul D. Smith. Hey Garrett, thanks for taking the time to let me pro my new Kickstarter for the finale of the Jason and the Draconauts series. So, it's a Kickstarter for two books instead of one. Uh, initially, we thought that this was going to be just one book as the finale of the series, but as I wrote and wrote and wrote, it turned out to be much longer than anticipated, which... Uh, presented an interesting problem for me. So I spoke with some author friends of mine, some people that are experienced in the editing process, and even some fans, and we all agreed that this would be better to break up into two novels. So the Kickstarter that's live right now is for what is going to be books four and five of the Jason and the Dragonaut series. Uh, the first book will hopefully be released right around the holidays uh, of this year. And then just three months later, uh, the final book, book five, will be released uh, that will wrap up the series. So we could really use everybody's help to back this Kickstarter project. If you go to kickstarter.com and just search for Jason and the Draconauts, or I believe you can search for my name as well, Paul D. Smith, uh, the Kickstarter will come up. So I hope to see a bunch of people get out there and support the project. Uh, it ends right around November 10th. And uh, thanks for giving me the time to promote this project. Thanks. Paul actually has a new fan level on the Kickstarter. For $55, you not only help support a great series, you will also receive a set of each of his first three books, plus a copy of book four when it comes out this holiday season. As for me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter 
at GKJ underscore publishing, and I'd love for you to connect with me there. And if the vlogs aren't enough for you, I have a new podcast, Creator's Corner, which can be found on anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, just to name a couple of platforms. New episodes launch every Monday to provide other writers with writing tips and encouragement. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back November 9th for an extra special segment of author awareness. Have a great weekend.